<clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna start. So last time I explained how can you use input capture like IRQ, okay? Uh, also, I explained how can we use output compare like RTI. So now we have in chapter four, I explained one IRQ and one RTI. In chapter five, now we have each channel. This each channel can be used as IRQ or RTI, okay? Uh, today, I'm going to explain, and this is the main functionality for input capture to measure time, as I explained last time. For example, if you have a signal like this one, and I want to measure the time from here to here, okay? I'm going to explain how can you do it. Last time, I told you all what I need. I need to know the count here. I need to know the count here, okay? Uh, also, I need to know how many overflows. So you need three, you need three numbers, okay? Once you have these three numbers, you can do calculation and you can calculate, uh, you, you can calculate uh, the, uh, you can calculate the, the time here, okay, in number of counts. So how can you do that? I'm going to tell you how. For example, look here, guys. If I start, for example, from count number five, and then I, I end at count number 10, for example. So this is the start. This is the end. So if the start, is greater than the end. If the start is greater than the end. Look here, guys. So when I come here, I'm gonna make one overflow here, and then I'm gonna come back to here until here. So the first overflow, so if you see right now, so how many counts you made so far? I made a complete round, okay? That means it should be 65, 535. It's a complete round plus 10 minus five. So I have to give, I have to get the difference from to here to here plus a complete round, okay? So th this is if the start is greater than the end, and that's exactly the formula we're gonna use right now. So wh what we're gonna do here, each, each one and each two, this is for uh, uh, for each one is here, the count here and the count here, okay? So here, if each two is greater than each one, so this is how, how you are gonna calculate the period. Number one, I'm gonna get the difference between each one and each two. I told you each one and each two, are actually the count, the first count and the last count. The count here, what was the count here? This is H1. What was the count here? That's what we call H2, okay? So here, as I, as I explained here, it's, so, uh, so now if you can get the number of overflows and also you can get H1 and H2, uh, so this is the formula you can use to calculate the period or the time, okay? Uh, so here you can see this is if H2 is greater than H1. However, however, if the other case is, this is the second case. If H2 is, is, is less than H1. In this case, this is the formula you have to use. The first overflow, the first, okay, so uh, or the first overflow should not be counted. It has to be overflow minus one. And that's, that's exactly what I'm gonna explain right now. Look here. So the second case, for example, if I start, for example, I'm gonna start here at, uh, I'm gonna start at, uh, uh, I'm gonna start at 10, I'm gonna end at in any number. So for example here, 10 and five. So this is the start, this is the end. Look what's gonna happen guys here. So when I come near, I'm gonna trigger overflow here. And then I'm gonna come to here. So the first overflow, is a first overflow, it should not be 65, 535. It should not be like that. It's a first overflow. Okay. Because you didn't go, you didn't make you didn't completely count from zero, zero, zero until one, one, one. Because you started from here, you are gonna trigger overflow here, and then you are gonna end here. So the first one, it should so so the way it has to be is uh, any any other overflow should be 65, 5, 535, but the first one. It should not be, that's why here in this formula, it has to be overflow minus one, okay? Because the first one should not be counted. Plus, plus, I have to add this one plus this one, okay? So, uh, and this actually, you can get it from the difference as well. So you can get here, you can get the difference, okay? Or the other way, other approach, you can do it. You can, cal you can multiply overflow times two to 216. However, again, for the first one, for the first one, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this part for the because the first one 
I didn't make a complete 65, 535, okay? Because I started from here, I triggered over through here, and then I came here. So I have to subtract this one from the first one. So this is the other way you can do it as well, okay? Anyway, so what I'm saying now, what I'm saying, guys, is all what I need to get, I need to get. I need to know what was the count here. What is the count here? I'm going to call it H1. What is the count here? I'm going to call it H2. Also, I need to know how many overflow, over timer overflow from here to here. Once I have this, these three numbers, I can, I can now I check if this one is greater, I'm going to use this formula, or if this one is greater, I'm going to use this formula. Okay. So I'm going to show you now how, how we do it. Uh, this is the assembly language. So I'm also, this is the C language. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach the C language. Uh, the assembly is exactly the same thing, similar to it, but I'm going to teach only one because I don't have much time today. So, uh, so as I told you here, guys, uh, every time I want to do measurement, I need to interrupt this. So I need one interrupt here, and I need a second interrupt here. Uh, here in this specific case, because I want to measure the time from here to here, so I have to, I have to configure input capture to capture only rising. So I have to capture only rising age a, 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 a rising. Uh, and that's what I did. So here, as you see here, what I did, when I did the initialization, I have to do the initialization to capture only rising. One more thing, you guys, in the very beginning, I have to make sure the timer is disabled. Why? Because if I want to measure from here to here, so I have, I have to start the timer here. So I have to start the timer here, okay? Because I don't want to count how many overflow happened here. That's why in the very beginning, you can see the timer is disabled. However, in the first interrupt, after in the first interrupt, I'm going to enable timer so that I start to count the overflows from here, right? So now let's see what, what, what I have to write here in the timer overflow. Okay, so there is uh, here, if I need to count how many overflows. So, uh, so here in the timer overflow interrupt, I'm going to just uh, increment overflow. Overflow is a variable. Okay, so this one should count how many overflows we have. Also, as you see here in the main program, in the main program, I have to wait for two interrupts. So I have here a variable. This variable is called interrupt, interrupt this number. This variable is called interrupt this number. So I have to keep looping here. I have to wait before I do the measurement, before I do the calculation, before I do the calculation for the, for, for the time, I have, I have first, to wait for two, I have to wait for two interrupts, okay? And that's what I did. So what happens here, this is inside the interrupt subroutine. As you see here, every time there is an interrupt, I'm gonna encrypt, um, uh, sorry, I'm gonna incre uh, increment the interrupts number, okay? Uh, and then if this is, as you see here, so here should be interrupt number one, here should be interrupt number two. So if this interrupt is interrupt number one, what I'm gonna do is, I'm, I'm going to take TC0, as I told you before, in input capture. Once there is, once there is uh, an uh, interrupt, the count, the count is going to be stored in, in TC0. So now I'm going to take TC0. I'm going to store it in the memory location H1. Also, I, ha I have to clear the flag bit. Also, I have, uh, I have to also to... Uh, uh, so, sorry, here I have, I have also to enable the timer because I, I, should, I, wanna, I wanna start the counting for, from here. That's, uh, that's why I wanna count the number of overflows from here. That's why after the first interrupt, I'm gonna enable the timer. One more thing also, I have to create the timer flag. You know why? I'm gonna tell you why. This is a very tricky mistake. Some students did it before. What happens is that because you have, you have a flag, maybe this is flag one from the history, right? So, I wanna, I wanna start, I wanna start the counting overflows from here, but, but, but maybe the flag is already one. So once you enable interrupts, you are, once you enable interrupts, you, the timer is gonna make interrupt right away. Okay, so this is a very tricky uh, mistake. So you have to make sure that you have to clear, you have to clear the flag, you, you have to clear the flag bit of the timer so that you can, you, you can start triggering interrupts from here. Any old. Any old overflow should not be counted. Any old overflow, if this one from an old overflow, I have to make sure this one is not gonna be counted, okay? So this is, as you see here, uh, this is for interrupt one. In case of interrupt two, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take TC0, I'm gonna put it in H2, 
اوكي سيس نمبر 1 ناو اي هاف تو ستوب اي هاف تو ستوب ذا تايمر اذروايز ذيس اوفر بلو مي تشينج يو كات ام سينك از اي تولد يو اي جاست وان اكاونت اوفر فلوس فروم هير تو هير ذات سو هير ان ذيس وان اي هاف تو انيبل ان ذيس وان اي هاف تو انيبل اي هاف تو انيبل ذا تايمر هير اي هاف تو ديسيبل ذا تايمر اولسو اي هاف تو ديسيبل تشانل زيرو otherwise if you don't disable it channel zero maybe when i do the calculations here while i'm doing the calculation here you are going to trigger input capture and you are going to change these edges you got what i'm saying so that is why as you see here uh, i have to make sure this one is off this the timer is off and the interrupt here is also is off okay so that now now uh, now i can do the calculation now you have h1 you have h2 so now you can do, you can do the calculations uh, this way okay Any question? So again, in the main program, I'm gonna wait for two interrupts. Once, one, once, once two interrupts. So two interrupts here actually. So two uh, input capture interrupts because I increment this variable here. After two interrupts, one interrupt here and one interrupt here, I should have enough information to do the calculation. So now I can come here to do the calculations, okay? Uh, also, you have to make sure in the very beginning the timer interrupts are disabled. You have to make sure here I have to enable, I have to enable here in the first interrupt, I have to enable the timer to start counting overflows from here. Is that okay? And uh, uh, so now the question is, so this is very simple programs is how can you calculate the time This how can you calculate the time from here to here, okay? Now the question is, what if I want to calculate the time from here to here? So what if I want to calculate the time from here to here? How, how this program would be different, okay? There is, you can do it in two different ways. What, what, one way may not be a good idea, okay? You can, you can change the setting instead of capturing only rising, you can capture both rising and falling, okay? So that, so that I can, Like I'm gonna have one interrupt here and one interrupt here. Okay, so you can do this way. You all what you need just to change this, this to the configuration so that you you instead of capturing only rising, you can capture rising and falling. Okay. However, I this is not a good idea. Why it's not good idea? Simply because you it may happen that you 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 are gonna measure this time, not this time. So what's gonna happen if If I start from here, so it's gonna one interrupt here, one interrupt here. So you're gonna measure this time, not this time. You got what I'm saying? Uh, if you start from here, okay, it's gonna work. Why? Because one interrupt here and one interrupt here. So you're gonna measure the time from here to here. Yes, it's gonna work. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It depends on wh where you are gonna start. Is that okay? That's why it's not a good idea to do this way. You know, what is the best way to, uh, in order to guarantee it's gonna work all the time? The best way is, In the very beginning, I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna capture rising. In the very beginning, once you can you you capture rising, in this interrupt subroutine, in this interrupt subroutine, I'm gonna change the configuration to say now I want to capture falling. So all what you have to do here, guys, you have to add one one command here to change the configuration so that in after the first interrupt, now I'm gonna say I want to capture falling, and I already did it here. And I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm explaining, yeah. So for example, here in the assembly program, I'm gonna add this one after in the first interrupt. So after the first interrupt, I'm gonna change the configuration so that I can capture the falling edge, okay? So in the very beginning, you are gonna capture rising. After one interrupt, I'm gonna capture falling, okay? Any questions? The other program I wanna teach here is about How can you use output compare to generate signal like this one? A signal like this one, okay? I explained the idea before, all what he said, what I explained to before, you have to say, for example, if you are using channel zero, for example, you have, to, you have to write this one and you have to write this one. You have to say, for example, here, at this, at, in this interrupt, remember you are gonna have one interrupt here, one interrupt here, okay? One interrupt here, one interrupt here, one interrupt here, and one interrupt here. In this interrupt, you have to say, you have to say, TC0 is equal to CNT plus 900. Please 
to gil after 900. In this interrupt here, I'm going to say, please remember T, C, and T, this is the timer value, the value of the timer, plus 2100. So please, please toggle after 2100, okay? So that's all what I'm going to do. So in the, in the interrupt subroutine, all what you have to do is you have to know, you have to know if you are here or you are here, okay? If I am here, if I am here, so I'm going to use this one. If I am here, so I'm going to use this one. Okay, so I'm going to say next toggle after 2100. Is that okay? So first of all, as I explained last time, how you came up with this number? How you came up with 900 and 2100 counts? As I told you before, what I did is that if you select the bridge scale to be eight, so in this case, the time the time for one count is one over three microsecond. Is that okay? As as we explained to before. So that means if you want to make if you want to make this one. 300 microsecond, how many counts? How many counts, the, how, many, how many times the timer should count here? So you have to divide 300 microsecond divided by one over three. That's, that's how you got 900. Same thing here, if I need here this one to be 700 microsecond. So that means that the timer has to count 2100 here, okay? So I'm gonna choose a program in assembly. So this is a programming assembly, as you see here, guys. Uh, number one, you have, for sure, you have to do this one uh, for interrupts, uh, for uh, output compare interrupts. Here, I'm going to use channel five. That's totally fine. Uh, also, I told you I have to know. I have to know if I am here or I am here. So how can you know? How can you know if you are here so that I have to use this one? But for sure, I'm going to use channel five. Or, I'm sorry, I have to use this one here or you have to use this one here in order to toggle after 2100, okay? So uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna make a variable. This variable is called high or low. So this variable, every time I toggle, so this variable uh, in the very beginning, the variable is here. So every time I'm gonna change. So this variable should be, tell me if, if I am here or I am here, okay? So as you will see right now. So I'm gonna make a variable this way and then I, I'm gonna create high count and low count. I told you the high count, this one should be 900. The low count should be 2100, okay? I made it this way instead of using numbers, I made it this way so that you can use the same program to generate different frequencies easily, just to change these numbers. Everything else will work, okay? So let's see. So this part is just the configuration for the timer and also for the output compare as I explained to you before. For example, here you select you select output compare. Uh, this is channel, you want the channel five to act as output compare here. Also here you select the action is to toggle. The action is toggle. So that means I want the pin, I want I, I want to toggle the pin after you count. So after you count 900, please toggle the bit. After you count 2100, please toggle the bit. Is that okay? Also here you enable interrupts as I explained before. Now, I'm going to have a variable. As I told you, I'm going to clear it in the very beginning. So I'm going to put zero in this variable because uh, uh, it's gonna, this variable is going to have two values, okay? One value to indicate to indicate that you are here or you are here, okay? Now I'm going to use the interrupt subroutine. So here in the interrupt subroutine, as you see here, all, always we do that. You have to clear the flag bit. You have to clear the flag bit is number one. Number two, I have to see what is the value of or, uh, what is the value of this variable, okay? Is it zero or one? And now, if it is zero, I'm gonna come here. If it is one, it's gonna come here. As I told you, I, I need to know if I am here or if I am here, because one of them, I have to use 900 and one of them, you have to use 2100. That's why I have this variable, okay? So if this variable, uh, if it is equal to zero, so, so I'm gonna come here, zero. If it is equal to one, I'm gonna come here, okay? So now look what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna read the current value for the timer, TC and T. TC and T gives you the current value for the timer. And then I'm gonna read low, low count. And then I'm gonna store the result in TC. So now TC, TC5 equal TC and T plus low count, okay? That means this one is gonna toggle after this value. After this value, you are gonna toggle. And now I have to change this variable to, to low, to zero. So that next time I'm gonna come here. So if you see how it works, one time 
I'm gonna come here. One time I'm gonna come here. Okay. Then next time here, next time here, next time here, next time here. And that's exactly what I want to do. One time I have to say uh, you have to toggle after look count, which is 900. Uh, sorry, uh, 2100. Next one here, you have to say I have to toggle after high count, which is 900 counts. Okay. So here, if you see this part is similar to this part, exactly same thing. The only difference is here I'm going to use high count instead of low count. Also here, I'm going to put one in the variable. So the next time you come to here. So this variable should have zero or one, zero or one. Okay. Uh, one value here, one value here. Okay. Any question? Guys? So it's very simple. All what you have to do is that number one, I'm going to program the output convert to two bit. The pin is going to two bit. Number, one. number two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to say if, uh, if I am here at the high, Please next after nine. Please toggle after nine hundred. If I am here, please toggle after twenty one hundred. That's exactly what I do because one time here, one time here. Okay. How can you do that? Simple. All what you have to TC five equal TC and T plus the count. So this 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 line here can determine can determine when when do you want to toggle. Okay. So after a certain time. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I think this. That's enough for the timer. Also, if you want to learn more, you have, so here you have the same program here. I'm teaching the same program in C language, as you see here. So, uh, uh, so this is exactly the same idea. So here inside the interrupt subroutine, as you see here, I'm going to check high or low. If it is zero, so TC5 equal TC and T plus high count, okay? And make it one. If it is one, I'm going to come here. And to make it zero and then add at low count. So one time you are here, one time you are here, one time you are here, one time you are here. Okay, because every time, how 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 can you make sure one time here and one time here and then next time here, next time here, next time here, next time? How can you make sure that this is how this is how I use uh, this this variable? This variable is if it is zero, I'm gonna make here, come here to make it one. So that next time I'm gonna come here. If it is one, I'm gonna make it zero. So that next time come here and so on. Um, Also, uh, maybe I'm not gonna teach this one, but I'm gonna explain the idea in chapter three. I explain how can we make the police alarm or the alarm signal. Uh, 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 uh. So all what we did in chapter three, we generated a score wave here. Is that okay? So now I can use output compare to generate this score wave. That's very easy. I can I can use output compare to generate this score wave. Okay. Uh, however, in order to make to make in order to make an alarm, so what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna alternate. So as as we did in chapter three, I'm gonna alternate uh, uh, two different tools or two different frequencies. Okay. So now all what I have to do, I have to just generate a score wave. Is that okay? So, and output compare can be used to generate a score wave, but the only trick here or what I'm gonna add now is you have, you, you have to change between high frequency and low frequency. So how can we do that? I'm explaining here in more details. First of all, because you wanna generate 500 Hertz and 250 Hertz, similar to what I have just did right now, you have, to, you have to convert the time. This is similar to what I did. You have to convert the time to number of counts. How? You can divide it by, this is the time for one count, okay? So that's exactly what I did. And I found I found that it should be 3,000, 3,000, as you see here, or it can be 6,000, 6, okay? So this one to generate 250 hertz, and this one to generate 500 hertz, okay? So... I already did this way, and, and you can see, you can see I can, uh, I, I, instead, I told you before, if, uh, if, for example, if you want to use the buzzer, you can put the code in the main program, or you can put the code in the interrupt, right? So that once, once you disable, once you disable the interrupt, you actually, you are not going to hear any sound. You enable the interrupt, you are going to hear, the, you are going to hear the buzzer, okay? But I think I made this program in two different ways, I guess, yes. The first way I made is, I'm gonna use the same program I taught here, exactly same program. Yeah, this program here, I'm gonna use this program 
However, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change these values, okay, in order to generate 500, 500 hertz and 250 hertz, okay? So I just change these values. Where, where you are gonna do that? I can do it in the main program here in this part. So, so this is the first, first way. This may not be the best way because you are gonna use interrupts and also you are gonna use the main program to do the side. So as you see here, so way this is just a simple idea. The way I made it in the main program, I'm gonna make high, high count, low count 3000. I'm gonna keep it for half a second. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna change them to 6000 this way. Okay, then uh, uh, so by this way, I can generate 250 Hertz. Here I can generate 500 and I keep, keep, keep doing it. Again, this is a very simple way because I already have interrupt here subroutine. Yeah, using this interrupt, using this interrupt subroutine here, I can generate a, a, a screw wave, okay? So I can just, if I change, if I change the value of high count and low count, I can generate any frequency, okay? That's what I did here. Uh, but again, this may not be the best idea, why? Because now I'm using the main program, also I'm using one interrupt to generate silent. I'm using both. That is why I made another program, as you see here, here I'm using only output compare. Okay, to make a police siren. How can you do that? Very simple. As I do, uh, so now I have I need I need to have a variable to tell me if I have to generate high frequency now or low frequency, right? Because I have two tones, so now I should have two tones. So I have I have to have a variable like this one to tell me if which two tone. So anyway, I'm not gonna go through it in details, but uh, as you see here, guys, the main idea is uh, every time here. Uh, uh, so here I'm gonna have a counter. I, as is, this is exactly similar to what I did in chapter three. So here I wanna generate one, I wanna generate one, uh, one tune for half a second in order to make it half a second. So you should have 250 interrupts. You can tell me no, but in chapter, in chapter three, it was 125. No, wait a second. It was one, 125 cycles, but now we are counting interrupts. In every cycle, we are gonna have two interrupts. You got what I'm saying? So 250 here, that means, in, uh, so it means one, 125 cycles. So this is consistent with what I taught in chapter three, okay? Same thing here, five, 500 interrupts, they are equivalent to uh, 250, uh, 250 uh, cycles, okay? This is exactly, this is the numbers who are used in chapter, uh, in chapter three, because in chapter three, we counted how many cycles, okay? But now we are counting how many interrupts. Every cycle you have two interrupts, okay? So anyway, as you see here, guys, what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna count how many interrupts I have. Once I have 250 interrupts, that means I have to switch from, from one frequency to another frequency. Once you are here, I'm gonna count how many interrupts I have. Once I do that, I have to change the frequency to another frequency. How can you do that? As I told you, all what I have to do just here, what, what I'm, as you see here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna compare, uh, every time there is one interrupt, I'm gonna increment, I'm gonna increment the counter, as you see here, I'm gonna increment the counter, okay? I'm gonna see what is the frequency. Are you generating low, low frequency or high frequency, okay? If you are, and then in case of high frequency, I'm gonna come here, if I'm generating low frequency, I'm gonna come here. So here, again, I'm using one variable to tell me uh, which frequency I'm generating right now, okay? And you can see every time I have to increment the counter, and then I have to compare with a certain number, right? After this number, I have to change the frequency from, from one frequency to another one, right? So here I'm gonna say, uh, if it is not equal, um, so here what I'm gonna do, yeah, if it is equal to 250, if it is equal to 250, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna clear the count, okay? Also, I'm gonna change the frequency, how? I'm gonna say high count and low count should be 3000. Okay, and then also I'm gonna change this variable because now I'm gonna generate the uh, high, uh, high frequency, okay, or so, uh, sorry, the low frequency, okay? Same thing, if you come here, I have to compare. If you're already generating as, um, this frequency to 50 hertz, uh, sorry, if you are generating the, high, uh, the low frequency here, so now I'm gonna compare it to 500, okay? 500 interrupts. Every five, if, if, you, are not, if you are not 500 interrupts, so I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna come here to uh, buzzer, okay? Just, just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just leave, okay? But if it is, 
if this, uh, so this is the main point. So the main point here, I need to count how many interrupts I have. And then every 250 interrupts, I have to change for, uh, to, to, uh, to this, this frequency. And every 500 interrupts, I have to change to this one. Anyway, I don't want to spend more time on this one, but this is the main idea. Uh, you have here the C and assembly language. I already explained how you can use RGI, right? Here also I'm explaining how can you use output compared to generate like a very long signal as a score wave, very long. For example, I wanna make a score wave like one second. One second is a very long time, okay? So here this one is one second. One second is a very, very long time. So here I'm explaining the idea quickly. So the idea here is that for sure, if you wanna toggle, if you wanna toggle after one second, you can't do that because one second is too long. So even if you use, even if you use the longest number you have, even if you use the longest number you have, you cannot, you cannot toggle after one second. So the way I'm gonna do it, similar to what I did in chapter four, I have to count how many interrupts I have here, okay? And maybe after 17 interrupts or eight interrupts, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you have to toggle. So the idea here is, as you see here, number one, uh, I'm gonna toggle every very long time. This is the longest time I have, okay? See, again, what I'm gonna explain right now, guys, is exactly similar to what I did in chapter four. You remember when, when, when I want to make flashing? So here I said, if I select uh, uh, the RGI, RG, we can trigger RGI every 131 millisecond, and this is the maximum time I have. So how can I make, how I can make one second? Or what we said, you have to, you have, you should have, multiple interrupts here, and you have to count how many interrupts. Every eight interrupts, they are gonna make one second. I'm, I'm using the same idea right now. So what I'm gonna do right now, guys, is I'm gonna here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select the maximum time, okay? So here, I'm gonna say TC and T, at, uh, TC equal, yeah, as you see here, I'm gonna say, I'm not sure if there is, uh, no, there is no C version of this one. So I'm gonna say TC5 equal TC and T plus, plus, plus the period. And this period, I'm gonna make it the maximum time. I think if you make it the maximum time, you can get only 43 milliseconds, okay? So now the question is, so the maximum, maximum time you can have 43. So how, how I can get one second, how I can make one second. As I told you, we are gonna have multiple interrupts. So if in order to make one in order to make one second, you need 23 interrupts, 23 interrupts. Okay. So what I'm, what's gonna happen right now is uh, number one, so every one here is gonna be 43, and then I have to count how many interrupts I have. Once, but this is a main point. Listen to me, or this is the trick. The trick is once I come here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what action I have to take on the pin, I'm gonna say no action. Don't take any action on the pin. Why? Because I want to keep it high. However, in the last interrupt here, I'm going to change. I'm going to say, please, the action is low or the action is too good. So I have to change the action here. You got what I'm saying? So that's exactly what I did here. So uh, in the first one here, I have to make sure I have to change the action to no action. I have to count one interrupt, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and seven, and so on, until the interrupt uh, 22. 22, and that's what I did here. As you see here, guys, every time I have to increment the interrupt, as you see here, I'm gonna compare it to 22. If it is less than 22, so do nothing, just leave, or go to go to end here. When I go to end, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say TC5 equal to this one to make interrupt after three, 43. So make another interrupt after 40, 43, 43 milliseconds. Okay, if not. If, if now, if it is equal to, to 22, if it is equal to 22, in this case, what I have to do is that you have to change the action you have to take on the pin. And this time you have to say the action is actually, uh, 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 here you have to take no action. Uh, however, uh, yeah, here it has to be no action. And this should happen here. Here it should be no action, but the one here before the end here, here you have to make the action is pull it high or pull it low. And that's what I did here. Anyway, so this is the main idea. I'm gonna leave it to you because I wanna spend some time on the pulse width simulation. Again, as I said last time, all what I need in this, from this chapter is how can you use, how can you use input capture like, R, uh, like IRQ 
for the exam. Also, how can you use uh, imp uh, output compare like RTI? So you should understand how can you configure the timer, okay? And also you have two programs here you should learn uh, for the final. But anyway, I already explained everything. I explained also uh, how can you use input capture and you already have two programs, one in C, one in assembly. How can you use input, uh, input capture to measure time? How can you use output compare to generate score wave, okay? And uh, now I, I'm gonna move to, I wanna spend some time on the pulse width modulation. As I explained last time, uh, what, what is pulse width modulation? Okay, in pulse width modulation, uh, as I told you before, we have a circuit here, a circuit. This circuit, all, uh, all what you need from the CPU, the CPU should, should ju just do some configuration. After configuration, this circuit is gonna generate a screw forever without any intervention from the CPU. So as, as, I, have, as I have just thought right now, guys, if you see here, yeah, I told you output compare is very efficient to generate a score wave. However, if for output compare, at least we need some time, as I explained here, we need we take some time from uh, from the CPU. So as you see here, guys, so I need one interrupt here, one interrupt here, one interrupt here, and one interrupt here, as you see here. So I'm gonna take some some time from the CPU. However, in case of pulse width modulation, once once you see, you set you set up the circuit. Once you set up the circuit, this one is going to generate a score wave and is not going to take any time from the CPU. Okay, this is a big advantage. So you can generate a score wave without taking any time from the CPU after you set up the, uh, the circuit. This is number one. Number two, and this is a great advantage as you will see today. It's very easy to change the duty cycle as I'm going to explain right now. So if if I want to change the duty cycle to make it something like that, if I want to change the duty cycle to make it's very easy to do that using pulse width modulation. Okay, so uh, pulse width modulation, guys, as I told you, number one, it's a very efficient way to generate screw wave, right? Because once you just write, once you once you do the configuration, you are going to you are going to have the signal um, all the time without without taking any time from the CPU. This number one, number two, pulse width modulation can, you can easily, you can easily change the duty cycle. You can easily change it. I, as you, I'm gonna elaborate now, I'm gonna tell you why, okay? So more importantly, how, how can you use pulse, pulse width modulation? Number one, pulse width modulation is used in case of stepper motor, because in case of stepper motor, you have to generate signals, so, some signal with a certain frequency. So you can use it in case of stepper motor. Also, you can use it for to control light, uh, okay, as you will see right now, or also in case of DC motor to control the speed. I'm gonna tell you why. So the idea is that, as you see here in this figure, guys, as I told you, in pulse width modulation, it's very easy to change the duty cycle, very easy, okay? So as you see here, as, as we move this way, the duty cycle increases, duty cycle increases. As you increase the duty cycle, you actually increase the voltage. You actually increase the voltage. We increase the voltage. So if you apply this voltage to, to a motor, you are gonna increase the speed of the motor. If you put it in to a bulb, you actually can, it's gonna increase the light of the bulb. So, so what I wanna see here, guys, uh, sometimes, sometimes for some, for some loads, for some loads, I wanna change the voltage. I want to change the voltage because by changing the voltage, you can control the speed of a motor or you can control the, the lighting or the brightness of the, of the light, okay? So how can we do that? How can you change the voltage? Simply by changing the duty cycle as you see here. By changing the duty cycle, I can change uh, the voltage. And this is something very easy, as, as I said before, and as I'm going to clarify right now, okay? So it's... Again, so let, let, before I move forward, let, let me summarize what is pulse width modulation. Again, number one, pulse width modulation, it's a, a, a very efficient way to generate a screw wave, okay? Because once once the CPU, right, uh, set, set it up, so this one is gonna generate a screw wave forever without taking any time. And this is the most important thing, without taking any time from the CPU after you bought, unless, unless you wanna change the frequency, you wanna do some changes. Okay, but to create, un unlike output compare, output compare, you have, should have interrupt here, you have interrupt here. Here, no. Once you set up the circuit, pulse width modulation is gonna generate a square wave forever. Okay, this is one thing. The other thing is, if you wanna control 
if you want to change the duty cycles, that's something very easy. As you will see right now, you can do it using pulse width modulation. Okay. Before I continue, I want to make something very clear. Pulse width modulation does not have interrupts. So no interrupts anymore. I know some students may be confused because I have been teaching interrupt for some time. So here in the timer system, I, I already, we use interrupts, but in case of pulse width modulation, no interrupts, just as you will see right now, just some registers. So once you write some values to these registers, you can program the pulse width modulation, as I'm gonna explain right now. So now, so uh, for our microcontroller HCS12, Okay, so we have pulse width, width, width modulation system as you show as, as shown here in this figure. We have 80 channels. It again, no interrupts, don't be confused. We have 80 channels. Every channel has a pin on port P, as you see here. Every channel has a pin on port P here. Okay, so that means you have 80 channels. That means you can generate eight independent uh, signals. You can generate up to eight, up to eight signals, different signals on port P, as you see here, okay? And every channel has some registers, okay? To control to control it, as you will see right now. Okay, guys? So in our system, we have eight, eight channels, okay? Every channel can, can, can generate a signal in, in dependent, okay? Let's see how it works. I'm gonna tell you how, the idea. The idea is that you have a clock. Where is this clock is coming from? Forget it for now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain how, okay? But, it, Anyway, you have a clock this way. And then for every channel, you have two registers. You have a register, it's called pulse width modulation duty. And you have another one, it's called pulse width modulation period, period. Is that okay? You, so for every channel, so you have this zero, one, two until seven. Also you have zero, one, two until seven. So for every, for every channel, we have two register, one for the duty, one for the period. Is that okay? Uh, So as you see here, guys, and we have a clock. Look how it is very easy, very easy. Look here, when I, for example, if I put here a number 100, what it means? It means this is the output, this is, this is the signal I wanna generate. That means this signal, the signal I'm gonna have here, okay, is gonna be equal to 100, 100 cycle from this one. So, so every, the number, this, so this number is relative to this one, okay? That means for every, for every 100 cycle, for every 100 cycle, please generate only one cycle, one cycle. Is that okay? So th that's why I'm telling you, it's, it, that's why I'm telling you it is, uh, that's why I'm telling you it is very easy. Just here, so here I'm gonna say for every 100 cycles, 100 cycles, please generate one cycle. So it's like, you can see it like we divide, I divide this frequency. So the frequency I'm gonna get here is actually this frequency, is actually this frequency divided by this number, right? Because every, for example, if you select here 100, so every 100, I'm gonna get only one, one signal here or uh, one, one cycle, okay? This number one. Number two, the duty, this register, this is that can determine how big, how big is this one, okay? So oh, again, all what you have here, I have, you have two, uh, you have one clock, as you see here, you have one clock and you have two registers for every channel, that's it. And then by writing some numbers to this register, I can generate different frequencies, different frequencies. As I told you, if this one is F frequency, if the clock is F, if I put here 100, so the frequency I'm gonna get here F divided by 100. Is that okay? If I write here 60, so this one is gonna be uh, F divided by 60, that's it. So this how can easily you control the frequency. What about what about the duty cycle? Yeah, by duty cycle, by just to change this one. Okay, for example, if, if this one is 100, the register, this one is 100. If I make this one 50, so he, that means this one should be 50, 50 cycles, this total 100, so by this way, 50 divided by 100, that's how the signal can be 50% duty cycle. However, if I make this register 10, so it's gonna be high, high for 10 cycles from this frequency, right? And then, and this one will be 90. So that means the duty cycle is gonna be 10%. That's why, number one, it's very easy to change the duty cycle, very easy. As you will see right now, all what you have to do, just to change this number here. If you want a duty cycle, for example, 
assume I'm gonna fix this one. I'm gonna make this one 100. If I need a two T sign, if I wanna generate a signal with, with uh, so this one can control the frequency. This one can control the duty cycle, okay? Because the frequency, frequency of the signal I'm gonna get should be f, f, f divided by, by this register. For example, if you put 100, it's gonna be F divided by 100. Is that okay? This register can simply control the duty cycle. So that's why I'm telling you, it's very trivial. You have a register. Just by, by changing this register, I can simply change the duty cycle. So if I put here 10, that means 10 out of the 100 are gonna be high. So the duty cycle is 10%. If I put here 30, so the 30% 30, uh, 30 duty cycle. If you make it 90, so this one is gonna be 90. Is that okay, guys? So again, so uh, this is how, so again, let me summarize what I said. Number one, we have eight false channels, okay? For every one of them, there should be a clock for a clock and also should have two registers, okay? One register about the period, the number you have to put here should be equivalent to how many cycles here to generate only one cycle here, okay? It's a number you have to write here in the, in the duty cycle, this number should tell how big how big is the high. And how big is the high in number of cycles here. So if I say 50, that means this one should be 50, equivalent to 50 cycles here. Is that okay? So now I'm gonna give you more details, but this is the main idea. So, so now I'm gonna start with, so you don't, so here, don't forget, we have one register or two register for every channel. That's why this one has zero, one, two, until seven, because we have we have eight different registers. Same thing here, we have zero, one, two, three, until seven. We have another eight different, uh, eight different register here as well, okay? Now I'm gonna talk about clock. You told me there is a clock. How can we get this clock? How can we program it? The answer is this. That's what I'm gonna explain right now. So for the clock, guys, we have what we call clock A. So for a channel, for a channels, zero, one, four, five, you can, you can select either clock A or scale to clock A, okay? So, but for a channel two, three, six, seven, for this is channel, you can select. This is the only selection you have. You can either select clock B or scale to clock B. Is that okay? So for every, actually for every channel, so there are only two options, two clocks, and you can select which clock do, do you wanna, do you wanna use for, the, for this each channel? Is that okay? So for example here, guys, so, uh, for a channel. So now I have two clocks for, for this channel. I have two clocks for this channel. Okay, so now tell me, how can we how can we generate these clocks? I'm gonna tell you how, look here. Number one, this is a 24 megahertz. This is a system clock, 24 megahertz. This is number one. Number two, you are gonna divide, you are gonna divide this one by a pre-scale. This pre-scale can take a value from one until 128. Okay, so you have to divide it by pre scale. And this pre scale, it is in a register. Okay, you can just write, write, write what this is similar to the pre scale we used in the timer. For example, as you see here, guys, we have two pre scales one, one here and one here. So one of them, so this one for uh, this one for clock B and this one for clock A. And based on whatever you write here, you can make the pre scale one. Two, you can make it four, you can make it eight until 128. So you can make the brisk scale from one to 128. Same thing here, you can make it from one until 128, okay, as you see here, okay? So why you have two? Because one, one of them for, uh, one of them for a scale to clock A and clock A, the other one for a scale to clock B and to clock B, okay? Yeah, here. So this is one brisk scale, this is the other brisk scale. So number one, you are gonna divide 24 megahertz by this brisk scale and then, you are gonna divide, and then whatever you get here, this will be clock A. Whatever you got here, it's gonna be clock B. So I can say simply clock A. So clock A actually, clock A should equal 24, 24 megahertz divided by pre scale. This is this is a this is a clock clock frequency. Okay. If I divide it by pulse by the pulse which uh, by by this register, okay. So this, that's how I can get the pulse uh, uh, pulse width modulation frequencies. So that's what I told you here. If this one is F, and so what I'm gonna get here is actually F divided by pulse width modulation period. Is that okay? So, but this F itself is actually 24 megahertz divided by pre scale in case of clock A. Same thing for clock B. Okay. So yeah. So this is this is actually the clock, 
and you have to divide by this one in order to get the frequency. Okay, so this is if you get if you get clock A or clock B, right? But if you get if you get a skill to clock A or skill to clock B, what's going to happen? It's going to be lower frequency, as you will see right now. So you are going to divide it again by a number. This number is in this register. So the frequency here, 24 megahertz divided by bridge scale, divided by this register, divided by two, right? So this, so this frequency is much lower than this frequency, okay? Uh, because it's much lower, that means you can generate lower frequencies, as you'll see right now. So as you see here, guys, so this is, this is if you look in, this is in case, look, look in, right? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, this is look A or look B. However, here is going to be, this is a frequency here. This is a clock frequency in case of skill to clock A or skill to clock B, okay? Again, very easy. So you, I'm going to show you how, but for every channel you can select, do you want to, for this channel, do you want to take the clock from here or do you want to take the clock from here, okay? So now this is a frequency. Again, I have to be divided by pulse, uh, by, by the period register, okay? Now, Let's see what is the minimum frequency I can generate and what is the maximum frequency frequency I can generate. So let's see now how I can generate the minimum, uh, the max, let's see the maximum frequency first. So I'm gonna generate the frequency when this one is equal to one, the minimum number, which is one. And this one also minimum number, which is one. In this case, you can generate 24 megahertz. This is your maximum. This is if you use clock A. So if you use clock A, your maximum is 24 megahertz. Okay, what is your, your minimum? I'm getting the minimum will be when this one is maximum 128, right? And when, when this one is maximum 256. And in this case, I'm gonna get 732 hertz. So, so if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna use clock A, you have to keep in mind that this is the range of frequency you can generate. You cannot generate more, you can generate less, you can't. This is the range of frequency if you wanna use clock A. I'm gonna do the same thing. For, for a skill to clock B, uh, for A or B, by the way, it's the same thing. For a skill to clock A or B, I'm gonna do the same thing. So now uh, let's let's find the maximum frequency. The max, maximum frequency when this one is minimum, which is one, when this one is minimum, which is one. So now it should be 24. So this one has to be one, this one has to be one, and this one has to be one. All of them are ones. In this case, the, the maximum frequency you can get is 12 megahertz. Okay, so let's see what is the minimum frequency. And now, as you see, comparing to this case, because you divide you divide by too many things here, and instead of 700, I can generate up to 2.8 Hertz less. I can generate less frequency, okay? So how can you do that? Uh, so here, this one has to be maximum, which is 128, it's, okay? This one has to be maximum, which two, uh, um, 256, okay? That's what I'm seeing here. And this one also has to be maximum 256, okay? So again, conclusion, let me tell you the conclusion. The conclusion is that, number one, we have eight channels, okay? Every one of them can, can uh, pulse with modulation, can, it can generate a screw wave, this is number one. Number two, as I explained here, for every channel, it has a register and it uh, for period, and it has another one for the duty cycle, right? And this one for the period should tell how big how big is the period. This one should tell how big is the high high value here. And this one just two registers. This one can determine uh, the duty cycle. This, this one can determine the frequency or the period. Also, you have to be you, you ha should have to use a you should use a clock, okay. And any number you put here it has to be relative to this clock. When I say here one hundred, that means uh, from here to here you are going to generate only one. This is the output of the bulk switch modulation. You are going to generate only one cycle for 100 cycles from here. Is that okay? For the duty cycle, how big is this one in number of cycles here? Is that okay? Now, then I explain to clock. Where is the clock? Actually, for every channel, you have two choice. You, either you can select A or B, or for some channels, you, you have A, uh, for some channel you have B, or you have scaled A or scaled B, okay? So, so as I explained here for a channel, a channel 0, 1, 4, 5, you can select between A and skilled A. A channel 2, 3, 6, 7, you can select between B and skilled B. Also, I explained here how uh, if, if you use 
if you use a clock E, so this is the range of frequency you can generate. If you use skilled E, this is the range of frequencies you can generate. Okay, so the question now is, okay, so which one I have to select? Or uh, for sure, there is, as I'm gonna teach right now, there is configuration you need to configure. This is channel should, should uh, the clock of this channel should come from clock A or clock B uh, or skilled A and so on, okay? So number one, how, which one I have to select? Should I select A or B? It's up to you, uh, sorry, A or skilled A, B or select uh, skilled B. It, for sure, it depends on the range of frequencies. You, you, so this is the range of frequency you can make here. So for example, if you want to generate lower lower than se, se, uh, seven, uh, 732, you should not use this one, you have to use this one. So it depends on the range of frequencies you want to generate, right? As long as uh, some frequencies you can, you can either, either one of them is okay. You got what I'm saying? So, so but, but this one has a limit. This is the minimum frequency. This one can, can go to low, much lower than this one, okay? Now I'm gonna talk about configuration. How can you configure it? As you will see right now, guys, in the configuration, very easy, very trivial. Number one, as, as I have just said, no interrupters. I, I I'm I repeated it two three times. No interrupters because I know you'll be confused because we have been using interrupters for some time. Uh, no interrupters here. Just just you have register. You have to configure the register. That's it. So number one, you have a pre scale for clock A and to clock uh, B. Okay. Uh, you, uh, so here, uh, so how can you how can you how can you program this pre scale? As you see in this register, here in this register, you can see here. This is the name of the register here, okay? In this register, we have three bits for clock A and we have four, uh, three bits for clock B, that's it. So once you, once you write to this register, you can program the pre-scale for A and B, okay? One more thing, as I told you, every channel you can select, it's up to you, you can select. This is channel should, should take the clock of A or scale to A, B or scale to B. How can you do that? Very simple. Again, you have a register like this one, this register, Every channel has one bit. Every channel has one bit. Is that okay? So if you put zero, as you see here, if you put zero, that means should, it should come from clock B or clock E, uh, because I told you for the channels, zero, one, four, five, is a selection you have should be between E and skilled A. For two, three, six, seven, should be between B and skilled B. Is that okay? So here, uh, if you put zero here, that means I want to take from B or A. If you put one, so you want you I want to select uh, the source, the clock source should be skilled or skilled. It's very easy. So just you have a register. Every channel has one bit. That's it. You can put zero or one. That's it. Okay. For you can program every channel. So this is one more register. We have another register here, guys, for enable or disable the signal. No interrupters. You enable to disable the signal. Again, we have this register, a pulse width modulation uh, enable. So here, for every channel, we have one bit. If you put zero, that means you disable. One means you enable. What it means, enable or disable? What it means? Uh, enable means you are gonna see a signal like this one. Disable means there is no signal. So if you wanna turn the signal off, all what you have to do, just to put zero here if you wanna turn the signal off. Very easy. So you have only one bit for every signal, okay? Uh, once you, when you put one, you enable it. When you put zero, you, you disable it, okay? Uh, or in other words, it's, you should be used to turn on and off the signal, okay? The other thing here, which may not be uh, also one of the things you can do for configuration, is uh, polarization, polarity, sorry, uh, sorry, the polarity. For the polarity, uh, so you can, you have, you have two polarity, one polarity, as you see, do you want to originate the signal this way or this way? So different uh, polarity. So again, uh, every bit, uh, every channel has one bit, okay? So if you put zero or one, uh, you can generate. So if you put one, you are gonna generate a signal like this one. And I think most of the time we can go with one, okay? If you put zero, so the signal is gonna be this way. So, so that means, you know what the difference is? The duty cycle, the duty cycle is gonna be the high one here, okay? But here, if you if this polarity is zero, so the duty cycle is going to be the low. Okay, uh, again, you can just you can use select this one all the time, and that's it. Okay, so again, uh, for, so you can generate a signal this way or this way. If you want to generate this way, you have to put one here in the corresponding bit. That's easy. Otherwise, you can put zero. Okay? The the other thing we have here, something we call it alignment. Okay, again, you have eight bits here for every one every bit here. 
every bit can do the, you can select one alignment. So we have two type, two different types of alignment. Uh, we have here left alignment. So left alignment, the signal will be generated this way. Or we have central alignment. So central alignment, you are going to generate a signal this way. So central, so here uh, it's going to be this way. This is period and this is a, a period, okay? So it's going to be like shifted, shifted a little bit. And again, this may not be a big deal if you want to, if you want to generate like a periodic, periodic signal may not be a big deal, but anyway, so here you can do that if you want. So how, so it means, so if you put here zero, as you see here, every channel has one bit. If I put zero here, that means it's going to be left aligned, aligned. But if you put one, so that means it's going to be center, center aligned. So every channel has one bit. You can put zero and one. It depends if you want to, if you want to, if you want to start from here and then you can generate a signal this way, or this way for sure this depends on the polarity forget the polarity now so this is going to be left left aligned or if you want to if you want to actually you are going to generate the signal this way so this is one cycle and this is the other cycle this way okay um uh, right or no sorry it's going to be shifted it's going to be it's going to be shifted this way so it's going to that's what could it's central central alignment so what's going to happen so i'm going to take this one and half half here and half here as you see here, okay. Anyway, may, may not be a big deal, but anyway, this one of the options you have. You can all the time you can use this online, unless unless you want to do something different and you can use this one. Just, uh, okay. So anyway, I think this is not a big deal. So on the all, I think for polarity, all the time we can just use this polarity. You can just put one here, and also for alignment, we can just use this one all the time by putting here zero. That's it. Um, okay. Now I'm gonna explain based on what I said before. I'm gonna give you some. So now you will see right now. Um, uh, uh, so now, uh, as as I'm gonna explain, uh, as I explained to before, uh, I, I'm gonna um, now I'm gonna show you if you wanna generate signal. What numbers? What numbers? Number one, if you wanna generate a cert certain frequency. Number one, you have to come up. You have to you have to decide which clock you have to select. Are you gonna select the clock A or scale A? This is number one. Number two, you have you have to decide what is the pre-scale, what is the value of the pre-scale, also what is the value of the period, what is the value of the period, also what's the value of the value of the duty cycle, and in case of scale A, there is another register. Let me go back just to remind you. Yeah, here. So in in case of uh, uh, scale to clock A. So instead, in addition to the pre-scale and uh, the period, also you have you have this one as well. So how can all what you have to do is very easy, as you will see right now, very easy. How how can you come up with some numbers here? How can you calculate some numbers here so that you can get a certain frequency? That's what that's what I'm going to teach right now. So it's, in this example, just very simple. Look here, guys. Number one, as you see here, for example, if I decide to use look E, now I want to generate one hundred. 100 kilohertz, okay? So based on the numbers I have here, yeah, based on the numbers, I can use either one of them, right? Because 100 kilohertz is in this range and one, 100 kilohertz in this range. So you can use clock E or skill T, there's no problem. You can use any one of them, this number one, okay? Number two. Now, so uh, just, you are gonna plug in, in this formula, that's it. So I'm gonna put here 100 kilohertz as you, as you see here, and then, if I do the calculation, so this part has to be 24. In order to get here 100 kilohertz, this part has to be 24. So now it's up to you. You can select any number here, any number here, any number. As long as the multiplication are 24, you are okay. You can generate this, this frequency. For example, I can decide, but, but keep in mind, keep in mind there is some limitation. The pre-scale only, this is, it doesn't, it cannot get any number. The pre scale only can, you can get one of this number from pre scale. Is that okay? However, for period, you can get a number from one to 256. This is the range. Okay. So any numbers in this range, if the multiplication is 24, you are okay. You can generate this, this frequency. Okay. For example, if I, if I can select a pre scale of one, for example, so I can, I can make the period 24. Yeah. In this case, I can generate 100 K hertz. Is that okay? Also, if you can select pre-scale of two, okay? And you make the period 120, also you can generate the same frequency. Is that okay? Uh, so this is same thing now. If what, what if I want to generate 50K? It's the same idea. Just 
So this one has to be 50K. This one has to be 50K, 50K Hertz. And in this case, the multiplication of these two should be 480, 480. Okay. In this case, I cannot put the pre scale of one because if you put the pre scale of one, uh, the period has to be 480. And for sure, the period should not be more than 256. Okay. That's why you cannot, unlike this case, you cannot use this one, but I can use this one. So you can put here pre scale of, uh, pre -scale of two and you can put the period of 240. Or you can put the pre scale of four and you can put this one 120. So that the multiplication is for, for, for 80. Both of them are okay as long as the multiplication for 80, as long as you can satisfy these constraints. You should not, this is the range for pre scale and this is the range for the period. Okay. What about the other one uh, for scale, scale to clock? It's exactly the same thing, but here I'm going to change the formula. This is the formula for scale to clock in, okay? Now you have to decide what is the value for pre scale. You have to decide what's the value for this register, what's the value of this register. For example, now if I want to, uh, if I, for example, if I want to generate 500 hertz, again, if you go back here, you will see, you will see here, I can't, I can't use clock A. Why? Because the minimum frequency I can generate from clock A is 700. Right? I cannot generate 500, right? So the only option I have is this one, right? So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna show you same thing. You just, you have to come up with some numbers and, and once you have these numbers, you can just write them to the register. I'm gonna show you now the programming. Programming is very trivial, just similar to what we have done uh, in, uh, in this course. You have a register, so you have to write some numbers in the register, that's it. So that's what I'm gonna show, show you right now. For example, here, guys. So I can't, here I'm telling you, I cannot use is clock A. Right, because this this is out of range. Uh, clock A seven thirty two. This is minimum frequency. Is that okay? So now, so all what you have to do, I have to put here five hundred hertz. Is that okay? And then you have to calculate this one. So if you do that, you will find uh, it has to be this way. So any numbers, any numbers you can select here for this one and this one and this one. So that the multiplication should be uh, forty eight thousand. It should be okay. For example, I I can select here two. I can select here 60, I can select here 200, by the, this way I can make for, uh, for, for, for each, uh, 48,000, okay? So here, if I select in the period, in the period I can select 200, for example, uh, now I can generate this frequency, 510 this frequency. Now, if you wanna change, if you wanna change the duty cycle, you remember you have a duty cycle, right? If you wanna change the duty cycle, that means, for example, if I make the duty cycle 100, if I put 100 in the duty cycle register, so now 100 out of the 200, that means, or 100 divided by 200, that means you can generate 50% 50, 50 duty cycle. If you put, so actually every two, every two is gonna increase the duty cycle by 1%, 1%. So if you put two, so it's gonna be 1%. If you put four, it's gonna be 2% and so on, right? So uh, for example, if I make it, if I wanna 90% duty cycle, so I have to put one each because uh, 180, is that right? 180, yes. 180 divided by 200 is gonna give you 90% duty cycle, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna show you number one in assembly. How can you program it in assembly? Again, very trivial, very easy. So look look how I made it, guys. Number one, this is a clock. You need to select a clock, as I explained to you before. So you have to write something to this register, very easy. Number two, uh, you have to you, the pre scale for clock A, so you have to write something here. Number three, you have to take care of the polarity. Okay. Number, uh, I'm going to talk about this concatenation. I'm going to talk about it sh shortly, so forget it for now. Also, you have to write some value for the period. You, uh, you have to write some value for the duty cycle, right? So you, you can see here the duty cycle 60, the value is 120. So it can, should be 60 divided by 120. So, so we're going to generate 50% duty cycle. You have to write something here. This is a, you are reset the counter. So you have just to put zero, just to be reset the counter to count from zero. Uh, also, I'm gonna talk about this one, uh, eight bit mode. Okay. Um. So once once you do once you finish this one, that's it. That's it. The signal is gonna be generated. Okay. But again, you have when you come up with these numbers, you have to do the calculation. I have just explained right now. 
So in the calculation, I have just explained. So you have to put 120 in the period. You have to put two in the pre-scale. So you have, you have to put this way in the pre-scale. In the pre-scale, you have to order the pre-scale. Yeah, here you have, to, you have to select two. Is that okay? That's it. So once you finish, no interrupt is nothing. Just once you write, once you write to the registers, these values to the register, the score wave is, score wave is going to be generated forever. Okay. Now, what, what if I want to turn it off for any reason? Yeah, simple. So now you have, I told you there is one bit to enable or disable the signal. That's it. So just in case, in case you want to turn it on, turn it off, you can, so this one enable, so you can see the signal. If you want to turn the signal off, you can, you can use this one. Okay. But to generate the signal itself, you don't need any time from the microcontroller once you do the initialization. Very, very interesting, okay? And also here I give you one example about uh, in this, it's exactly the same thing, but here I give you one example. I wanna show you how it is very easy to change the duty cycle. So once I do the configuration this way, the duty cycle now is 50% because it's 60 out of 120, right? If you wanna increase the signal, so now it's 50%, okay? So if you wanna, if you if you wanna make it more than fifty percent, just just increase this number. That's it. Very this one. I'm telling you, it's very easy. As you see here, I wanna increase it by ten. So I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the duty cycle. I'm gonna add ten. Then I'm gonna store it back here. Okay. So uh, I'm here in this example. I'm showing you. If you wanna, and this is one of the uh, main uh, or the main ad, ad, advan, advantages of uh, of the pulse width modulation is you can easily change the duty cycle. You can easy, easily change the duty cycle. Is that okay? How? By changing this one, okay? For example, if I put here 10, it's gonna be small. It's gonna be something like that. If I put here like 90, it's gonna be something like this one. If I put here, uh, for example, 100 or 110, it's gonna be something like that. So it's very easy. Just one register, just when you play in this register, you can easily change the duty cycle. And I told you in many application, when we by changing the two D cycle, you can change the voltage. Okay, and anyway, I'm, I don't have time to go through all. All uh, I have a lot of applications, uh, examples, a couple, a couple of examples here. Uh, the the last thing I want to teach here, guys, is the idea of concatenation. What what is the, What do you mean by concatenation? What is the idea of concatenation? I'm going to tell you what is the idea. Very simple idea. As I told you before, let me go back here. As I told you before, guys, here. Uh, you have this is the range. If you if you want to use clock A, this is the range of frequencies. If you want to use a scale to clock A, this is the range of frequencies you have. So let me ask you a question: What if I if what if I need lower frequency? What if I need lower frequencies than this one? What can I do? Right. So in order to get lower frequency, you can this period you can make it bigger. Now it is byte because it is byte. I can only divide by two fifty six. But if this one is a word, if this one is a word, I can divide by a bigger number. So, so that I can, I can decrease the frequencies more because you are gonna divide by bigger number. And this is, this is exactly the idea of concatenation. The idea of concatenation is I can take two channels, I can concatenate two channels together. So that I'm gonna take one byte for the, for the period, period of one channel, one byte for the period of one channel, I'm gonna use it as a word. So, so that the, by this way, here you are gonna divide it by a word. This is the idea of concatenation. So the idea of concatenation is that uh, I, wanna, I wanna get lower frequencies than these frequencies by, by concatenate, concatenating two, two channels. How? I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take the period of one channel, the period of another channel, now I have, and this is what I'm gonna divide by here. So now we're gonna divide by a word instead of a byte. So this is the main idea. I'm gonna tell you quickly how, how this can be done. Very simple, just in case, uh, th again, this is just in case you need to get lower frequency. So the idea, as you see here, I can concatenate, I can, con I can concatenate channel six and seven. And the output is gonna be from seven. If you concatenate four and five, the output will be from five. If you concatenate two and three, the output will be from three and so on. Uh, if you concatenate zero and one, channel zero and channel one, one the output will be in one. Is that okay? Also, to, uh, okay, so how I can concatenate? In order to concatenate, or, or also if you don't want to concatenate as well. So if, that's why I told you there is, one, there is one register here. I told you I'm gonna explain later for concatenation. So actually you have this register, this one here. 
So here you have this bit. This is for concatenation for a channel zero and one. If you want to concatenate, just to put one here. So if you put one here, that means I'm going to concatenate channel zero and channel one. Okay. See, this one for a channel two and the three. This one for a channel four and five. This one for a channel six and seven. This if you want to concatenate. If you don't want to concatenate, just put zeros here. Okay. So, or, or for example, this one may not be concatenated, but, or this one not, con but I want to concatenate two and three. Okay, guys. So again, you should understand what I mean by concatenation. So idea of concatenation is I can lower the frequencies. How can you lower? Uh, here I'm giving you a very good example here. For example, in case of clock E, okay? If you use it in eight bit, eight bit mode. Eight bit mode means no concatenation. There is no concatenation. 16 bit means you are gonna concatenate. In this case, the maximum value I can put here, 256. That's why the lowest frequency was something like this one. However, if you concatenate, this one is gonna become a word, not a byte, because I'm gonna take two registers from two different channels. And now this, this number is gonna be much bigger, this number. And now I can lower the frequency from 700 to two. This is the main idea, okay? Again, you should understand what concatenation means. You should understand how just you can do it. You, uh, how can you do it? And also, uh, I give you I give you example here. Uh, I give you example. Uh, just as you see here, it's not very difficult. As you see, just uh, this is very easy to teach because just you have numbers. The numbers you write it in register. That's it. There is no interrupts. Nothing you need to do. Just once you come up with this number, write them to register, and that's it. So it's gonna it's gonna you are gonna see the tutorial forever on, unless you want to turn it off. Okay, right. Uh, anyway, I think that's the end of the semester. So see you next uh, week, right, for the final exam. Good luck. See you, bye.